Welcome to Stream, a truck tractor trailer.com production. My name is Zach Miller, and I'm your host. And I'm joined today by Greg Frary, who is the Chief Experience Officer at truck tractor trailer.com. Greg, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And thanks for having me, uh, Zach. It's always a pleasure uh, to talk to you, as you, as you know. And uh, it's, always a, it's always great to be able to reach out to the TTT community. Um, and share some share some messages with them. Well, you know, and I I love talking to you, Greg, because you I I grew up with people like you. I grew up in the trucking industry, so I grew up around a bunch of lifers. And you are a a trucking industry lifer. You've seen it all. If it happened in the trucking industry, you've seen it. Yeah, I, yeah. I started uh, basically uh, at 16 years old, and so I've over 40 years. Uh, in the industry, and and I've done it. Uh, I've done it all. Uh, it seems over the over the course of those uh, forty one years, um, and from uh, you know fueling and, and dumping oil into trucks at age sixteen, um, and washing windshields and and thumping tires and those kinds of things, um, you know, all the way up through uh, leading the entire truck service organization for a large. Uh, truck stop company. Uh, yeah, the, the journey was uh, was long and it was valuable, and and I became uh, very well versed in the ways of, of the trucking industry in my journey. <laughs> my <life. laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and that's we uh, we we certainly can't compare it because I started out, you know, doing invoices and fighting parking tickets in high school. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know, that's the thing about New York City. We have to deal with more that that side of it. But yes. Yeah, but you know, it, it's interesting though, because we've seen so many changes that, that, that have happened in the industry, you know, the, la the last couple of decades. And, and we stand at such a crucial time in the industry. What, what are mm -hmm. some of the changes that you've seen, that you've really noticed? Well, you know, the, of course, the most recent, probably um, impactful, most impactful uh, changes are regulatory um, from engine manufacturing and, and um, diesel particulate filters and after treatment systems being, becoming mandated in around 2010 uh, in critical mass. Uh, and then uh, the requirements of uh, onboard uh, logging, electronic logging mm -hmm. devices versus the old, the old paper uh, log books like, uh, you know, drivers uh, would carry, you know, three different log books uh, in the truck and pull out the one that, that suited them best if they, you know, if they, <laughs> Happen to, to to fall victim to a, an inspection, uh, but that you know, and that that's all related to uh, regulating trucking, which I guess happened in the eighties. Um, so that that stuff has all all just uh, come a, a long way and made lots of lots of changes to the industry. That were, some were easy for for truckers and trucking companies to ad adapt to, and some some not so much. Uh, and, and a lot of that also depends on over time, the size of fleets. Smaller guys, uh, a lot of times have a rougher time uh, getting through regulatory things and, and whatnot, just because they're, they're small and they just don't have access to all the resources. Yeah, and that's the thing about, you know, when, when anytime you talk about regulation, the second part of that conversation is always the unintended consequences, right? Because yeah. regulation, you know, look, safety is safety. You have to prioritize safety, especially if you're in a vehicle like a truck, mm -hmm. but you, you know, you do have to balance that out with the unintended consequences. And the, the ELD mandate specifically had a couple of those unintended consequences. One was definitely made life very difficult for the small carriers, the independent operators. Mm -hmm. And it also, and this ties back to, you know, some of your career in trucking, it exacerbated the massive truck parking shortage that we have yes. around the country. Yeah, it, it really did, and it, the hours of service, right? That 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 seemed to continually uh, change, and uh, you know, and my, every time they do, somebody is unhappy. Uh, this last round of changes, I think most people have been unhappy uh, with, with those, and those are a few years old now. So I think people are um, getting more used to them, of course. But yeah, the parking situation is 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 
is really tight, uh, to say the least. Um, and it, you know, in places where you are, right, New York City and other major urban areas, it's it's worse. Um, part of the, uh, you know, the new uh, proposed uh, infrastructure bill will include some provisions for uh, offering some relief. Uh, there's also some some businesses that have sprung out of that. Um, that are, you know, finding uh, parking in non-traditional areas, non-traditional parking places, um, and then offering those up so that, you know, drivers have a safe place to go. Uh, not always with amenities and, and whatnot, but always safe and, and off, the, off the highway, off the ramps. Um, and, and so people are working on it, I guess is the short story there, but there's a lot more work uh, left to do in the truck parking area. Yep. No, there, there really is. And, um, and you know, and I'm sure this doesn't surprise you, but one of the major complaints that come to local uh, elected officials here, here in my neck of the woods is, you know, why are these, why are these trucks parked over here where they shouldn't be? <laughs> yeah. And then, so then they wind up calling us. And then I say, well, you know, look, I don't, I don't condone it certainly, but like, where do you want them to go? There, there's yeah. no place for them to go. <laughs> That's right. You want your, you know, you want your goods and your, uh, uh, where you want them, when you want them, and how you want them. But uh, you don't think about how that has to, well, everything that goes into making that happen, and trucking and trucks and truck parking, uh, all in a big basket, are very much a not in my backyard kind of business, right? Yes. Don't tell me how it got here. Just make it happen, and don't inconvenience me with your truck, right? So. <laughs> That, that, that's, uh, that's it. The truck stops face the same uh, issues, quite frankly. Um, it, nobody wants, you know, nobody wants a, a truck stop at their exit or their, uh, or in their town or, or whatever, even though, you know, tremendous amounts of uh, tax dollars uh, are generated for the area. And even though with modern trucks anyway, uh, the exhaust coming out the stack is probably cleaner than the air that's going into in some cases. Uh, you know, uh, but it's noisy. I get it, right? And and trucks are slow, and trucks are big, and you know, and they're inconvenient to, to drive around uh, if you're in an automobile. But they're so necessary, right? So necessary, and so I, I think that's another one of the interesting misconceptions about the industry because people need to remember these truck drivers. They're professionals. These this is their professional livelihood. They have mm -hmm. more training. Uh, you know, they get more experience. I, and, and someone like me, who's not, I don't have to drive that often, right? Because I live in, I live in a major city, but when I do have to drive, and especially I do have to drive on a highway, I like driving in, in the truck lanes because I know that this is their life. They're making sure that I'm safe is a huge part of their <laughs> livelihood yeah, yeah. as, oppo as yeah. opposed to some guy, you know, in a Mercedes who doesn't care at all, cutting in and out of traffic. That's the dangerous driver, the professional yeah. truck driver. That's the safe driver. Yeah. The, the, safety is a number one concern for fleets. It, it truly is. Um, you know, look at it, look at everything else, uh, all the other KPIs and measurements uh, that, that, that fleets use to, to measure success. But number one is always going to be uh, safety and safety devices within the trucks and safe driving habits and driver monitoring, um, all of those things. Um, and, and vehicle systems that promote safety, anti-rollover, uh, anti-lock brakes, uh, adaptive cruise control that are, that, are, that are coming in trucks, even down to automatic uh, transmissions. Um, all of those things uh, come together to play a role in, in the safety of the truck and the, and the driver. And the, and the vehicles surrounding them, as you mentioned. So, yeah. And I think that's something that, I, I think there are a couple of factors, and this is where I want to talk to you about right now. I, I think there are a couple of factors that are pushing more people to take an interest in the industry, you know, to, to become a driver or even a mechanic mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. Because, and I think safety, this, the safety of the vehicle is a big one. And I also think just like, you can't, you really can't go outside right now and not see a huge demand for freight, right? I mean, the market oh, is no. the market's yeah. exploding. The market is exploding. Uh, began well, um, you know, freight is is, is cyclical, uh, but we're uh, we're in an uptick right now that that nobody uh, that I've uh, followed or or have read uh, up on ha is predicting anything 
short of just being the freight market, just being on fire, you know, maybe all the way through 22 and into 23. So, um, and it's consumer goods right now that are, that are, that were propping us up. And I, but I think you'll, you're, you're starting to see probably more uh, new construction and stuff firing mm -hmm. back up now that the pandemic is starting to, to, to level out. Um, but yeah, the, the last, the, 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 the consumer goods flying across the United States have created a short and a shortage of trucks, right? There, there's, there's not enough trucks, there's not enough drivers, and there's not enough technicians to take care of the trucks uh, to meet all the demand, which of course means freight rates uh, go up and it eventually hits you, you and me in the, in the wallet, right? Mm -hmm. um, those things get passed, passed along and then that's fine. Um, but yeah, that, so manufacturing shut down for a while in, in, a, in the spring of last year, right? No trucks were being being made, but the freight continued to, to trend up and, and get hot. And, and now we're in the middle of a chip shortage of all things, um, which is affecting manufacturing of all kinds of things, but that includes trucks. So fleets are hanging on to their equipment longer um, mm -hmm. because they can't replace it with a new one. Uh, March, uh, a record number of new truck orders were placed in March, right? So when those get manufactured and those start hitting, um, hitting, the, hitting the, the market, then, then there'll finally be more used trucks available. Right now, the used truck market is just extremely tight mm. just because trucks are needed and, and trucks are selling like hotcakes and are selling at premium, premium prices, quite frankly. That's incredible. And this is, you know, trucks of all, from, you know, box trucks to tractor trailers, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, the, probably the fastest growing segment of trucking the last mm, five years, maybe, maybe a little longer, um, is the, uh, you know, it's kind of the Amazon effect. It's that final mile, um, box truck, straight truck, even small truck, the, the sprinter vans. Um, that yeah, that you see uh, everywhere, uh, every single day. Uh, all that that segment of trucking is just blistering as well. So all kinds, of sizes, classes, shapes of trucks are in high demand right now, as well as drivers. Right. So, incredible. Yeah. Um, that that really is incredible. And it's funny because I've seen Amazon. I, I've seen Amazon. They bought uh, old mail mail trucks they bought you know the penske trucks which they didn't even do a good job mm -hmm. painting they bought you know minivans whatever I, whatever amazon could get their hands on they're yeah. just slapping the logo on it and driving around yeah i saw uh surprised me the other day just down the, just down the street from my house I, I passed uh an amazon truck that clearly used to be a bread truck right yeah <laughs> you know that that kind of that kind of truck not a sprinter it wasn't new um but it had, you know, it had a had a new paint job on it, and you know, someone had, uh, uh, you know, gotten into the business of final mile delivery with Amazon and found a truck and painted it the company colors, and you know, off off to business they go. So, yeah. But yeah. that is something. I, you know, the, Amazon's Amazon, but that is something that um, people looking to get into the industry, you know, people who want to be owner operators. It, it's yeah. something they could keep in mind. You know, you. You could get a truck. You have to get trained. You have to have your CDL. But you know, you could get a truck and and you know move and start picking up loads. It, it, it's a possibility for you. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can, you can do it uh, as uh, as lightly or as heavily as you wish. There's the, the the industry is is opportunity from from top to bottom. You can you can you know buy a buy a van uh, or a, a truck uh, less than ten thousand pounds gross vehicle weight. Uh, and avoid everything in terms of the CDL except for the physical, which you're probably getting anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, most of us go once a year and get a physical, um, or many people do. Um, and, and so you're already doing part of it. You've got a truck, and yeah, the, you could find a lot of demand for white glove service type service or, or specialty, or, uh, I mean, you could really, you could really get into a niche market and, and make a living for yourself just doing final mile delivery for folks. You absolutely could. Absolutely. And that's not going away. That's only no. going to grow. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I get so I mean I know I understand that the used um, market is tight right now, but but even then, you know, I, I am sure there are there are people looking to unload vehicles. Um, so I guess how would they go about doing that if, if they were you know looking to sell? Well, we we, we see uh, a lot of trucks for sale on places like Craigslist and places mm -hmm. like Facebook Marketplace, and those are generally a single owner with a single truck, um, you know, wanting wanting to sell it. They limit themselves uh, a little bit, right, by geography and and whatnot, um, and viewership when they uh, when they do those things. Um, but you know, there are other larger services like like truck tractor trailer, um, it, which is unique uh, in their approach. But they could list it on truck tractor trailer for you know one hundred and fifty dollars and. Um, get exposure to a nationwide audience for their truck, right? Um, and, and the buyer would come to them financed already. Um, and the buyer, you know, could could select to have the truck inspected or uh, to buy insurance on the truck or get the truck delivered to them right through the portal. And then um, it makes the buy-sell transaction uh, for the seller and the buyer extremely easy and, and fluid uh, and smooth. Um, and neither one has to do anything but get on the get on the laptop, right? Right from from both sides. So, but yeah, that that's that's uh, one of the things, right? That really has picked up over pan over the pandemic period, and it was already growing, but it, it got on hyperdrive. The shopping online, right. and, and whoever thought that would become a big thing, but I mean, if you think about it, you say, well, I'm not spending $50,000 on a vehicle without seeing it in person, but it happens on Carvana every single day. You know, it doesn't take long for a used pickup truck, for instance, that costs $50,000, right? And a, a tractor could, could be $50,000. It's the same amount of money out of pocket, um, but people are, are, are buying, buying vehicles uh, sight unseen by the by the thousands every single day greg i have friends who bought their house online during the pandemic it blew me away that that they would do and they said well you know we we, we didn't expect to but you know this is yeah. what it was and 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 they said listen we did a virtual tour of the house i mean yeah. we you know every single room we saw it you know perfectly so what's the yeah. problem i mean i I, I see why it's not the same way. If you, if you're putting every, you know, the picture, the specs, everything, you could walk them through the cab. It's just, you, you could sell a truck online. It, it, yeah. it's no different. And like you say, you know, you're not even limiting. You, you have the entire nation to choose mm -hmm. from. You're not limiting yourself to, you know, your specific geographic yeah, area. Your area, right? Yeah, and, and as long as there's a, an a, a, an unbiased third party inspection available. Which you know you can uh, you can uh, ask for certainly if you're buying a house you, you don't buy a house without a home inspection um, and and you know probably having a, a an, an inspection on the truck is good too um, it's a little you know it's a little bit of extra cost but it's uh, uh, it's um, a peace of mind yes but it, it but it proves to you that the pictures weren't lying and the specs weren't lying and you know, and, and, and other, you know, th that the truck is roadworthy, that it will pass a DOT inspection, um, that it's not throwing fault codes, right? The, all the electronics are working, uh, the engine's firing exactly as it should, that the odometer uh, being, uh, being listed, uh, the mileage uh, is correct because you pick that up on, a, on an electronic uh, inspection as well. So yeah, all of those things come together and, there's really nothing else a buyer could need. Right? I mean, it really isn't. You get videos and pictures and, and all the diagnostics in the world that are available. Um, you know you know that truck better than anybody by the time you're ready to pull the trigger. So, yeah. And there's you, no and, reason not to, I guess. No, there isn't. And, and again, I mean, that's why a, a truck tractor trailer .com just makes more sense than, than a Craigslist or, or even a Facebook. Yeah, oh, sure, sure. And even just some of the listing services that are out there that, that just list um, the vehicle um, aren't as, nearly as, as comprehensive in terms of uh, information available about the, about the vehicle.
that's what you need. And I think, you know, that's, that, that's some advice to anybody who's, who's, you know, looking to, to get into the trucking industry. If you want to be an owner operator, you, you can't put a price tag on peace of mind. You really can't, no. you know, I know, I know you, you're getting, you're getting started. You're on a tight budget, you know, all, all those startup concerns. We get that. We respect that, but, but this is trucking and your mm-hmm. piece of, your peace of mind is, is, you know, one of the most valuable assets you, you're going to have moving forward. Yeah, that, that's your, that's your, that's your asset, right? That's what's making the money. Uh, when the wheels aren't turning, uh, nobody's earning. Uh, and, and so that's what needs to happen, right? Is the wheels need to roll to the, to the greatest extent possible. And what you do when you, when you get the inspection and, and, and all that, uh, and an extended warranty too, by the way, right? If the truck passes the inspection, uh, you can, you can also have extended warranty. Um, and that's all just peace of mind, and it's also all just to protect your asset and keep the wheels moving and keeping, you know, the the owner uh, earning money for their for their family. So, absolutely. Uh, anybody you know looking to get involved has any questions? Please comment. Uh, let us know. We'll we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And and mm-hmm. certainly let us know what you're seeing out there. You know, on the road in the market. Um, it's going to inform the way you know we move forward. If you like what you've seen, please like, subscribe, and share. You're listening to Stream. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.